What's up guys, welcome back um, to our machine tutorials here. This one's going to be real quick and real short. I'm just going to go over some basic things here, um, like opening a project using the browser. I'm going to show you how to build out your own kit. What I mean by that is like replacing the sounds instead of loading them out as a group. I'm going to show you how to load individual sounds into the pad, and that way you can kind of build out your own kits. I'm going to show you how to adjust the overall volume of the machine. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it by pad, by group, or the master volume, and I'll show you the same thing with the swing. Um, we'll be going over um, that and uh, basically changing colors. So this is going to be a real short video to show you how to configure some different things. Um, first thing I'm going to go over is just showing you how to load your project. Um, you already, we've already done that already, um, but I'm going to show you how to do it from the browser uh, real quick. It's because it's real simple. To load your project from the browser, what you want to do is you want to make sure you got browse selected right here. So browse is going to be lit up like that, and you want to go ahead and um, take this master, select master, but filter this by project. And once you filter it by project, project, go ahead and set your bank to user. So go ahead and scroll down to get to user. Now, whenever you save a project, the machine software by default tags it and puts it in the user bank. So once you have that selected on user and you go over to screen two, you'll see all your projects you've been working on in there. And if you have some, uh, um, what do you call them, expansions in there, they might have thrown something in the user bank too. But if you're on the project and user, you can just go in there and scroll down and you find your one that we've been working on. Mine is called Untitled. So I'm just gonna go to it and hit the button here that's gonna load it for me. So I hit that button, it's gonna say loading, it's gonna load my project up, my one's already loaded, so it doesn't make a big difference. Um, but now that project is good and loaded. Now, the very first thing I'm gonna show you how to do, well the first thing I showed you was how to load your project for the controller, but I'm gonna show you how to replace some of the sounds in your project. Um, and I'm gonna show you three different ways to do it real quick. So, my sounds are all in this thing, so I'm not necessarily of course. I'm in I'm, all my sounds are in A. So they're in my A group, see A is lit, and I have all my sounds in here. So while I'm playing it, say I want to load a different sound, right? Just to hear what it sounds like while I'm playing it. Well, there are three different ways you can do this, and they're all really straightforward and simple. Um, my microphone is over here on the left side playing it, let's move it. All right, so the three different ways you can do that is like this. You can, um, you want to go over here, look at your, your first screen here, you want to press this, the button for sound. So that button is going to take you to sound. Once you have sound selected, you're going to go and filter this by sample. So your filter is going to be on sample. Your bank is going, well, for me right now, it doesn't have to be on drums, but it's going to be on drums. As long as sample is selected, you're going to have this option up here called pre here. You see right here, it says pre here. Um, when you select pre here, basically what pre here does, it allows you to hear the sound on the second screen as you're scrolling through them. Okay, so I need drums, so I'm gonna change my type to drums. Whatever it is, I'm not looking, I'm like trying to look at the screen. Oh wait, my type is on drums. I'm an idiot. Um, so anyways, I got my type on drums. And as I'm scrolling through them, I can hear them. Now, if I select the pad I want to load, say I want to change this clap here. So if I select the clap, actually, one moment. Okay, I'm back. I had to go for a second. I just learned something myself that I didn't know because I never did it in this order. Um, basically, so you want to load your sound. I'm going to show you what just happened to me, too. Um, you got your your uh, theme playing, right? And you want to change this clap. So remember the one that you last selected is the one that stays slow. So this is the clap right here. So I want to change this. Um, I can press my pre here to hear what it's going to sound like in advance. You see, I got pre here lit. When I scroll through it, I can hear the sound that's playing. You see, I hear when I like. I want to load it. I just hit load. 
and it's going to load that sound in there. Now, I can go ahead and set something else. And hit load. And then load that sound in there. Now you can do that all day. Anyways, what just happened to me is, if you had that pre here selected, um, and you try to select a different sound, it's not going to change. See, it still has this one lit. See, that's where my pre here is lit. If I deactivate my pre here, and then I try and do it, you know it's the last one that I select stays selected. So, that's good to know, because I didn't know that until just now. So, you select pre here, and you're trying to change it, you can't change it. Anyway, so we saw how to do that. Just go over it one more time. I got pre here lit. If I want to change the sound in the pad that I already have selected, I can just scroll through them. I can pre here them in advance and say, oh, that one sounds nice. I hit load. It loads it into the currently selected pad. That's not the way I do it. The way I do it is this. If you unselect pre here, you can use this other neat feature called um, auto load. Auto load does it like this. No, you can select any pad. See? not locking us to a pad. Select whatever pad you want here. And every time you hit button five or six up here, the previous or next, oh, sorry about the camera shape. Every time you hit previous or next, it's gonna load the sound automatically. See, change it automatically. No extra steps. You can still scroll through them. You won't get that pre here in there, but you can say, hey, what's that one? And every time you hit next, it's gonna load it previous you can go back so that's the way that I actually like to do it I said I was going to show you three ways to do it but I honestly can't remember the last one um, I think it was just loaded without the pre here you can just like go through it like this and just hit load instead of next and then just load it up so those are the ways that you can do that um, pretty straightforward stuff here um, I'm trying to think there were some other things I'm going to show you in this video okay yeah also changing color so on this Changing the colors of your pattern, like if you use FL Studio or something like that before, um, you can actually only do that in the um, in the machine software. So in order to do that in the machine software, if I can get my camera somewhere where it makes sense, in order to do that in the machine software, go ahead and just select the pattern you want to change up, and just select color, and you can change it to whatever color you want to change it to. So that's just something that will help you organize. You can only do it from the software. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So that's how you do it. You right click the sound and you go down to color on the bottom and you just select the new color that you want to use. Okay, so another thing, and sorry for going so quick, I'm trying to keep this video under 10 minutes. Um, another thing that you can do is you can rearrange the order of your beat. So say you want to move this thing down here, this uh, kick, you can move it, sharp it down like that and it's going to change the pattern of it. But also notice the number here it's also going to change the um, the pad that it plays on. So you see when I move my my kick around, where's my kick right now? It's on pad seven. So my kick is right here right now. Now if I move that pad seven up to let's say we move it all the way up to the top of the machine. Now it's up way up here. See, just remember where you put it. You can use that to rearrange your drums. Like say you said MPD before uh, Kai MPD and you have made a beat but your stuff is all over the place, you can use that to rearrange your pads even after you make your beat. It's gonna update it automatically. Um, that's something that's really useful. Another thing that's really useful is volume. I almost forgot to show you volume controls. Okay, so volume, you can adjust your volume. This video is not gonna be under 10 minutes. You can adjust your volume. Um, you can adjust your master volume. Volume's over here. You can adjust your master volume for the whole pattern going to adjust everything in there. Um, I'm just going to throw something in here so we can hear what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can adjust your your pattern for the whole thing. Like this. So that's your sound for the whole thing. You can also adjust your volume for the group individually. To do that, hold down the group you want to adjust. Let me turn this down. Hold down the group you want to adjust and adjust that volume individually. So I'm holding down this group, and I can drop the volume down on it real low, or just turn it up a little bit, and it's only affecting group A with my drums. Same for group B, I can select group B, and I can turn the volume up on it, and it's just gonna be for that melody pattern that's in there. So that's one thing that you can do. You can also adjust the, the volume for the individual pads. So if I was to select, um, 
this pad right here and while holding which the one I can actually reach. If I if I selected the pad and I turned the volume at the same time, if you can see what I'm doing here. I can adjust the volume for that individual pad. But now this is a group of sounds, so it's not gonna work too well. Now if I do it on the drum so where each is actual separate group of sounds, say I just want to drop out the um the kick, I can select the kit and I can change the volume up for it. And that's just affecting that kick. Or I can drop it down and would just take the volume down for that kick. So that's how you do that. The same thing with um, swing. You can adjust your swing for your whole pattern just by jumping it up a little bit, or you can just adjust the swing just for your uh, for your actual like single groups. So you can break it down into groups and just put up the swing on the drums or however you want to do for your creative process. So that's pretty much it here. We looked at um, opening a project using the browser. We looked at replacing some of the sounds. It's going to help you create your own kits. We looked at adjusting the swing on um, the software or on the controller. And um, we looked at changing the colors to the sounds. Very basic, straightforward stuff. A lot of stuff you can do in the software too, like changing the colors. You can actually up here, go up here and adjust the swing just by clicking it and dragging it up and down. You can go into the software and adjust the volume right here. And you can also go and adjust the volume per pattern by selecting the volume knob on the actual um, part of the pattern that you're working on, whatever the instrument is, and adjusting it like that. So these are just a few of the things that you can do with the machine software. Um, I, I hope you can dive into it and just get a better feel for it. Because um, from here on out, I'm beginning into some more um, fun stuff. So we'll be working with um, creating some nice beats and some nice rhythms and working with some melodies and diving into uh, scenes in the sequencer. So stay tuned and please subscribe so I can quit make, uh, so I can keep making these videos. Um, thanks again for watching. <clears throat> Have a good day.